Hello, my name is Jesse and I'm here at Ableton in Berlin. Today I'm going to end the Getting Started with Live 9 series with a tutorial specifically targeted at optimizing the audio preferences in Ableton Live. As mentioned in the first and third videos of the Getting Started series, you may wish to improve some audio settings for recording and playback. In this tutorial, I'm going to go through some basic theory, as well as how to get the most out of your computer and external audio interface with Live. This is an advanced tutorial and longer than the other tutorials in the Getting Started series. It's only necessary to follow this tutorial if you need to optimize your audio settings for your own setup. Your audio interface should already be connected to your computer and speaker monitors. Now launch Live and go to the Preferences window and click on the tab that reads Audio. There are two parameters that are important for recording and playback in Live. They are Sample Rate and Latency. Sample Rate is the number of samples per second that are used to represent a sound digitally and is measured in Hertz. The standard setting is 44,100 Hz for most audio interfaces, which represents CD sound quality. Some audio interfaces can record sounds at much higher sample rates, resulting in even more accurate digital representation of recorded sounds. Higher sample rates are more CPU intensive and increase the size of your recorded audio files. Only use higher settings if you're working with a powerful enough computer system and your recording requires the highest quality for your projects. For most cases, we recommend 44,100 Hz as the best option for this setting. The default sample rate and pitch conversion can be set to normal or high quality. This determines the quality of pitch conversion for all clips when the tempo or pitch is changed. This is normally set to high quality, and you can leave this so. The buffer size value helps to determine how big or small the audio latency is. Latency can simply be described as a short period of delay when the audio signal is recorded and when it emerges from your speakers. Or when a key on your MIDI controller is pressed and you hear this sound from your speakers as audio. The lower the buffer size, the lower the latency can be, but the higher the CPU load on your computer. The buffer size allows us to set up a balance between responsiveness and audio performance when using Live. Live can simulate a high CPU load to find the correct buffer size value for your system using the test section directly below. In the test section, first set the tone volume to a minimum. Set the CPU usage simulator to a maximum of 80% and finally switch the test tone on. Raise the tone volume to a comfortable audible level. Set the buffer size to a low level starting at 16 samples. You will probably hear dropouts in the test tone output. Increase this value by multiples of 2, so 16, 32, 64, 128 and so on until the test tone is absolutely clear and undisturbed. You can then switch the test tone off again. Please note that if you're a Windows user and you have an ASIO interface, your latency settings might be in a separate control panel. For this part of the tutorial, we're going to look at a topic called driver error compensation and how to set this if necessary. This setting is only relevant in a direct monitoring scenario where musicians recording do not hear their own signal through the computer. This also involves some theory which you can read at the end of Live's built-in lesson under driver error compensation. Go to the help view in Live. In the Live lesson section, scroll down and select all lessons. Under Hardware Setup, choose the lesson called Driver Error Compensation. You will have already set up your external audio interface. Connect an audio cable from your audio interface's output directly to your audio interface's input. 
it does not matter whether this is an analog or digital connection. It is important, however, that you make a real hardware connection. Open the live set included in the lesson Driver Error Compensation. In this live set, there are two tracks. The track labeled 1 Audio contains a drum sound that will be re-recorded into the track 2 Audio through live's output using the external connection already set up. Before we start, make sure that the follow function is unchecked and in preferences under the tab Record Warp Launch, the Create Fades on Clip Edges is also unchecked. Press the spacebar to play the arrangement. The level meter of one audio will light momentarily as the drum sound from the beginning of the arrangement is played. Press the spacebar again to stop the playback. Replay the arrangement with the spacebar and watch the level meter of track 2 audio. If the external connection is working, you should see a signal here as well, even though the meter appears grey. If the signal is too strong or weak, adjust the master volume in the master track and then try again until the signal is about equal to track 1 audio. Remember to press the spacebar again to stop playback when you're done. We are now ready to record the output of 1 audio to 2 audio. Prepare live for recording by engaging the record button. Begin recording by pressing the spacebar and end it by pressing the spacebar a second time. The recording will produce a new clip in track 2 audio. Double click the title bar of the new clip to display its contents and turn off the warp switch for the new clip. This allows us to adjust its timing in milliseconds. If you look closely at the clip's waveform, zooming in if necessary, in most cases the drum sound starts somewhat later than the beginning of the original sample. Since we started the recording and playback at the same time, ideally there should be no delay. However, in real recording situations, there's always some amount of delay incurred when going in and out of the computer with our audio signals. Now we're going to offset the clip's start marker so that the clip starts at exactly the same point as its contents. Please click in the rightmost start field, which represents milliseconds, and then press the up arrow key repeatedly to increase its value. As you do this, the clip start marker moves right and the waveform scrolls left. At some point, the waveform of the original drum sample in track 1 audio and the waveform of the recorded copy in track 2 audio will align. Once the waveforms are aligned, take note of the value in the start field, then open Live's preferences. Select the audio tab and enter the value that you noted into the driver error compensation field. We've now determined how many milliseconds the audio interface's driver is cheating by and we have informed Live so that it can compensate for the latency in our recordings from now on. Let's verify our work. Select the clip in Track 2 Audio by clicking on its title bar, then press the delete key to remove the clip. We'll record another pass as before. Our result shows that the waveform of the new clip aligns with the original without any manual adjustment. If the case is that the recording does not line up exactly with the original sample after the driver error compensation has been entered, we can gain a more accurate value for the driver error compensation. With the driver error compensation reset to 0 milliseconds in the preferences, delete the recorded clip in track 2 audio and repeat the recording process again. This time, zoom in the arrangement view to the point where the recorded waveform starts in track 2 audio. You can see from the timeline in milliseconds what approximate value the start point has and enter this into the driver error compensation field in the preferences window. So your audio interface should now be optimized for use with Ableton Live. 
This video concludes the Getting Started with Live 9 series. Thank you for watching and have fun making music with Ableton Live. If you need more help and guidance after this tutorial, please have a look at the Help View menu in Live. Live's built-in lessons also take you step-by-step -step through some of the tutorials we've covered, as well as other more advanced topics.